extra functionality that you're adding. So I don't know if, if there's um, specific places or maybe if, uh, um, I don't know, journals like Value in Health or um, MDM might be even more and more interested in things like that. Um, and the other thing is, again, to say that if there is an interest, the RHDA website is more than happy to host case studies like these and examples of, look, we've done this and this and that, and these are all the technical parts and the commands that you should use and the GitHub repository is there. So um, we're very happy to, to bring that uh, into, into the fore. Um, um, can I, can, sorry, John Lucas, can I just come back on that? I, um, as you, any of you who are SMDM members will be shortly to receive your, your last copy of the journal for the year, um, in which the new journal editor who takes over for next, uh, in January next year will actually be, be writing that he is, uh, looking to do more tutorial type, uh, articles in, in that journal. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's potentially uh, uh, an option for for that that kind of paper. That would be very interesting to to have. I think. Thank you, uh, Benedictus. Can I just add you to the last round of of thoughts? Have you have you got any any comment on the, what we we've been discussing so far? Um, yes, my thoughts are fully aligned with what we what uh, what the rest of the panel is saying uh, one point that i want to, to 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 bring again you mentioned it and i think it would be very helpful is to have some guidelines on which packages are validated uh, and therefore acceptable and could or even should be used i mean um to to some extent because r is a um, is a open source and freely available uh, it might not be appropriate to say, please use this package instead of another package, because also new packages are being developed usually to cover a new need. Uh, the problem with these new packages is uh, that is validation. So should I use it? Do I trust it or not? We have been, we have seen in the past situations where we analyze the data again after uh, two years and we see different results because of the different packages that have changed. So this is, um, in this is very problematic. Of course, it can happen in other software as well. Uh, bugs are being um, found in uh, uh, commercial software, and every now and then there is a whole team that identifies them and solves them. In R, that may happen um, slower. Uh, and sometimes we say that a, a package is not um, uh, supported by a new version of R, uh, some packages become obsolete. This can create problems because a model that was fine and was working may no longer work. And um, we may need to use a different package that exports things with a different parameterization. So suddenly we need to change everything. And um, uh, so although it may um, defeat the very purpose of R, having a, a list of potentially several uh, packages that can do the same work but have been validated and uh, would be uh, useful. And um, uh, by uh, the other point is that uh, we should have uh, improved the documentation in many of the packages that um, uh, are out there at the moment. We have seen over the last years uh, a, a big um, development in, uh, on, on that area and uh, now we can find a lot more information than what we used to in the beginning where we just had the syntax and find out what it does but now we uh, we have better documentation however in there are situations where still we don't know what the package will exactly do it would be very useful to know uh, full details of the formulas behind uh, how would we I estimate degrees of freedom in, in a specific situation. Uh, the information can be found in most cases, but it it can require a lot of time to, to go and find it. And um, if uh, there are uh, some um, uh, guidelines and, uh, uh, and some standards established, uh, so that one package is uh, considered um, approved for HDA use, uh, that could uh, encourage more people to go in there. Thank you. 
Um, there's been a question in the chat, um, which I'm reading verbatim, and then uh, people can have uh, comments on that. Would be interesting to, to read a case for R, Python, others as a tool to drive positive change in the methodology of HTA. Starting from a clear view of the change, we would like to see rather than what R does better than Excel. Perhaps this has already been written. Given, given the need to generate enough enthusiasm to overcome status quo bias and the learning curve of new software, this seemed necessary. Um, and I think that um, the author of this comment might, might want to um, expand on that. I think that one of the things that I've been involved in uh, personally has been the work on value of information, uh, where um, a lot of the development that uh, in, in our group, but other groups as well have done, wasn't just to use R, it was to use software that can do things that Excel just couldn't do to develop that kind of methodology, to do that kind of extra tools for PSA, for example. Um, but there may be other examples uh, on that. I think there's and, a great example, actually, um, uh, if, if, if I may, um, and that is, but it um, unfortunately doesn't quite involve R. Um, which is network meta-analysis. I mean, I mean, I think Winbugs is an example of a piece of software which, frankly, isn't isn't the easiest piece of uh, mm -hmm. software to use, but nevertheless has uh, has increased flexibility with the questions it can answer to an extent that it has driven uh, a change in in methodology. Uh, or the application of methodology to problems that we couldn't answer in a frequentist uh, framework. That's a very good point. So can I just um, deviate a bit from the chat? I'll, I'll let people go off the point that I'm just about to raise for the panel and uh, go back to answering points in the chat if they think they are more relevant than what I'm about to say. So I'm very happy to do that. But I wanted to raise this um, idea. So. Again, this is maybe a bias of going back to something that I thought before I even started the discussion. But is there a value perhaps in keeping on working on something that is very much specific? So finding some kind of consensus of what the packages that we need might have. And by package, again, I mean it in the plain English version of, of the sense, not just an R package, but a package of software that uh, goes and, and answers the right questions in terms of the methodologies that are necessary. And of course, from the RHDA consortium point of view, we can bring that kind of expertise, but it doesn't have to be restricted just into R. But to do something that is, um, is going towards a consensus in the field, and maybe kind of inviting a, a few of the people who are at this meeting coming from different perspectives, academia, industry, consultancy, regulatory agencies, to kind of drive the line and say, this is, what the, this is the kind of thing that we would need. This is the kind of answers we're looking for from software. And, uh, and if you can deliver that already, should we validate it? Can we validate it? Have we got tests to, to make sure that we're happy by using that? Was that something that would be a valuable addition, people think? Okay, I can make a start here. Uh, so, Please. Um, I may not have understood the question very well, but what, uh, what, what I have in mind is um, recent developments in methods and uh, approaches uh, to answer real problems. For example, treatment switching, um, which has been there for a while, but uh, there has been some communication about uh, methods on how to appropriately um, uh, adjust for that and some guidelines uh, from NICE um, in the last years. Um, so again, I think that um, we cannot have a very prescriptive um, list of, um, of, uh, of analysis as a package, uh, but we could, we could have a list of frequently reused packages, but the, the risk there is that we may uh, force uh, people to, to think along the lines of fitting a, let's say, partition survival model. Uh, there are other solutions and uh, every problem should be bespoken depending on, on the methods that, uh, that, that, that we, um, uh, on, the, on the challenges that uh, we are facing, new methodology might need to be developed. So 
another example is, for example, when we have um, uh, differences in uh, uh, the schedule of, uh, of assessment for progression, and we are doing uh, indirect treatment comparisons that are unanchored. Uh, and uh, we have seen that there, there is assessment time bias there, and uh, new methods may need to be developed there. Uh, so, um, depending on, on, the, on the problem, uh, new methods need, need, need to come up. I mean, uh, but in terms of uh, what typical models um, may be sufficient, uh, I think that uh, the list is simple to create. So I don't know whether there is a real need for that. Jean-Roper, you're muted, I think. You're on mute, Jean-Luc. Jean-Luc, Jean you are on mute. Sorry, I was just waving like a mad Italian person, wasn't I? Um, no, I was just going to say, we're going towards the end of, uh, of our time. So I'd like to kind of wrap it up and give each panelist a, a final sort of opportunity to, to give us their thoughts and, uh, and then we'll go towards the end. So, Francois, I was inviting you. Do you have any, uh, any extra thought at this stage? Yes, um, so I, I just wanted to, to uh, highlight so, some of the key messages that we, uh, from, my, from my perspective, were very interesting in the discussion. Uh, for example, um, <clears throat> really using the appropriate tool for, regardless whether it's R, SAS, Stata, but using the appropriate tool for the job, first thing, the issue of um, <clears throat> using, for example, wind bugs for for uh, for specific, specific tasks, uh, and and we know that wind bugs interacts very well with 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 our mm -hmm. the uh, the development of new methods uh, also uh, in which R can can play an important uh, an important task. So again. Uh, at NICE, from, at least from our perspective, we are more than happy, extremely open to any kind of uh, new initiatives to pilot with industry, to uh, pilot with academia, in which uh, we are also interacting with a lot of um, uh, foreign countries to, uh, to transfer our knowledge, transfer, transfer the methods, uh, make the tools, uh, let's say, very efficient tools available to um, small and medium-sized enterprise uh, developers of digital, digital health technologies, because we have pretty much focused on, on, on big pharma, but, but to, we should, shall not forget that a lot of small companies, small structures who do not have this expertise are very willing to, uh, willing to adopt some, uh, some, um, uh, some tools which can be in a way, fairly easy to use. So, if there is any initiative in which we can contribute, uh, collaborate, whatever, to, to develop these aspects, we are more than, than willing to, to, to collaborate with these uh, pilots, initiative, whatever. Thank you. And I think we should. We should, if we want to demonstrate again the value, we should make some pilots. We should conduct some studies. And we should show the, show the value to the, all these stakeholders. Thank you. Uh, Lisa and Andy, uh, would you like to go for the final interventions? Uh, so I just wanted to pick up very briefly on what Ewan's point. So I think Ewan has, has clarified a little bit what he meant. Um, and, and I mean, I think that sort of works back into this sort of uh, point that Andy made, you made, I made about, you know, using, selecting the right methods uh, to answer the questions that we have. I think perhaps you and what you're suggesting is that we could, uh, you know, having our available to us may change the types of questions that we can ask. Uh, and I think that's certainly true in terms of things like uh, treatment sequencing models. So when we're looking at, um, you know, very long-term diseases, 
actually people tend to just sort of do a Markov model and don't really consider the treatment sequencing aspects of that. But R does actually make that easier. So, I mean, I would agree. I, I do think it does allow us to change the questions uh, to some extent. And I think that that is to be, uh, you know, that's a good thing. Uh, but having said that, you know, some of the questions we're asking are right and indeed the methods that we have and the tools that we have can answer those questions for, you know, reasonably well. So, you know, we don't have to change everything just because we've got this available to us. We just need to select the, the occasions on which we should be using these different tools. Thank you. So, um, uh, just a very brief comment, if I if I may, um, I, ev everyone's seeming to agree on uh, using the right tools for the for the job, and of course, one of the advantages of R is the ability to uh, perhaps bring in to the toolkit uh, advanced statistical methods. Um, another example I thought of while while the discussion was going on is perhaps uh, cure modeling, for example, uh, which wasn't used very much um, uh, a few years ago, uh, but since it's uh, uh, now can be implemented in R, can be implemented in Stator, albeit uh, a proprietary package, uh, I think that does drive change in uh, methodology. As I previously said, I think network meta-analysis is a good example of where actually, you know, if you were to look at how Winbugs has influenced the HTA um, uh, landscape, I think it's mainly in that area of uh, opening up uh, tools of network meta-analysis where we can't do that uh, elsewhere. I, I uh, I will follow up with uh, people after the meeting because it's been, uh, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed this meeting and participating in this panel. I've learned a lot. I'd like to learn a little bit more about what's just been said about sequencing models because having thought a little bit about sequencing models, to my mind, some of the biggest problems with sequencing or modeling sequences is the lack of the evidence not the not the availability of particular tools in any software package to deal with it but simply uh, we don't have the evidence that we want to have for um, uh, understanding how treatments given in different sequences uh, uh, impact outcomes thank you Andy. thank you uh Thank you very much to all the panelists and all in the audience for all the questions and comments. Um, what I will try and do is to collate all of them and uh, make them available along with the recording of the two meetings. Again, bear with me because it might take me a bit of time to actually put everything together. Um, but I think this is incredibly helpful and incredibly stimulating. So um, certainly you will hear more from us and we'll try and have more events like this in the future. In fact, we'll try and have a combination perhaps. Um, I think most of us, if not all of us, do miss the interaction and the possibility in the coffee breaks to talk to each other and, uh, and actually seeing people giving their talks. But on the other hand, we were having the discussion on Friday as well, having a, like a, events like this online uh, actually increases the, uh, the audience and, and, and gives a, a wider pool of people who can participate. So probably we will try and do a mixture of things when, when things go back to some form of new normal or, or, or will allow us to have face-to-face -face interaction. Um, but in the meantime, uh, what I would like to say is again, thank you all for being with us Friday and today. Thank you especially to all the panelists and the speakers uh, for incredible presentations. I've enjoyed throughout the two days. It's been very, very, very nice and I've, I've really liked it. Um, what we'd like to do is, again, to get feedback from people and uh, to get um, ideas uh, to sort of uh, help us guide the process. So uh, certainly if you have case studies and you would like to try and give them some uh, publicity, our website is a place where you can come and we're very happy to, to give that kind of publicity and to publish uh, extended tutorials. Um, and uh, we're very much happy to liaise with um, again, academics with industry, with consultancy, with uh, places such as NICE. And I think, Francois, your, your offer 
is incredibly valuable. It's something that we would really like to do. And personally, I think what I would like to see is this development of the environment. Uh, if we're talking about just the RHDA, putting together people who work in this and have ideas and have packages already to, to try and avoid duplications, to have a streamlined process where you know, the packages can be validated at different places and you feel comfortable doing the survival analysis in package A and then the post-processing in package B and then maybe have a package C whose job is just to, to ensure that you can use all of these different bits and pieces to feed into an Excel spreadsheet for the final part of it, the economic modeling if, if needs be. So um, again, thank you all very much for, for participating, uh, contributing and, uh, and, and, and asking and, and answering questions. And hopefully we'll see you all at the next uh, workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John Luca. Thank you, John Luca. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, bye -bye. Thanks everyone for a great workshop. Thank you.